Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy web show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a guy that avoided paying rent for three whole years by becoming a professional pet sitter. I will tell you all about him and introduce you as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a pet parent, a dog walker pet sitter. He's one of the speakers at the upcoming Pet Sitters World Conference. He's a photographer, an entrepreneur, content creator, and YouTuber. He's an adventure seeker, a road tripper, a self-proclaimed foodie, but he's not too good for box wines. He's a coffee lover, a world traveler, an adrenaline junkie, who's originally from Roseburg, Oregon and currently lives in Jacksonville, Florida. He's partner to Cole, dog dad, to a chihuahua named King, whom I'm sure considers himself as such. And he's cat dad to two cats, one by the name of Alan and the newest by the name of Athena. He's owner of Bad to the Bone Pet Sitting in Jacksonville, Florida, Doug Keeling. Welcome, Doug. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here. So I have to ask, how long does it take to style your mustache? Too long, too long. (laughs) Really? I love it. I love it so much. Before I get into that and how I noticed your mustache, I want to introduce our drinking game. So anybody participating in our drinking game today, anytime you hear this word, make sure you take a drink of whatever it is you're enjoying, but please be sure you're over age, wherever it is you're joining us from. Remember, never drink and drive and always drink responsibly. What are you drinking today, Doug? Tequila orange juice. Ooh, tequila and orange juice. Keeping it simple. I love it. I actually kept it simple too. Limoncello and spritzer. So, uh, and seltzer. So it's a limoncello spritzer. That's awesome. That sounds delicious. Well, cheers. Cheers Cheers to you for being on the show and for keeping it simple with me. It's Friday. I bet you've had a week like I have. So we were trying to make it simple and straight in, right? Like no, no fusses. Just get this straight to the, the bloodline. Awesome. Well, the reason I know about your mustache is because I watch a lot of your YouTube videos and I follow you on social media. Um, And I, one of the things that I learned about you by following your uh, social media and your YouTube channel is that you're an avid reader. Oh yes, I love to read. You can see, these are one of my bookshelves but I have several bookshelves throughout the house. And right now I am reading, your pets are fine and other lies, the true adventures in pet sitting. I just started this today. It's already got me on the edge of my seat. Who is the author of that book? I've never heard of it. Yvonne Feltman. Nice, Yvonne, we're gonna have to have you on the show and I wanna read that book. I bet you uh, we can all exchange some stories. Oh yes, my goal (laughs) is to write a book soon. So I'm trying to read every single book that I can find on pet sitting and dog walking. That way I know what I'm doing when I sit down to write my book. Oh my gosh. You are the biggest overachiever I think I've ever had on the show. I'm not going (laughs) to (laughs) lie. I don't know about all that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, talking about bookshelves, the first game that I designed for today's chat, which I always introduce the show with a game because it kind of leads us into our conversation. This is called Badass Bookshelf. And it's because you like to read business books. And I find you to be a very natural, gifted business person, but I find it interesting that you like to read books that other business minds have written to expand your knowledge, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the game consists of me giving you one minute on the clock, and you're gonna tell me as many books as you've read about business and why you liked them. Are you ready? Ooh. Oh God. (laughs) I'm ready. Are you ready? All right, let's do it. Ready, set, go. Okay, my all time favorite is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. It will change your absolute life. Um, Attraction is, that one will change your life. Um, Any book that Kristen Morrison has written, all of them, I can't even name all of them. I read all of them like 10 times. I love all of them. Patty Moran's book, she's like the OG pet sitter. She wrote Pet Sitting for Profit. That's a killer book. Um, Oh God, how much time do I have left? (laughs) 30 seconds. 
<laughs> oh god. Um, uh, Josh Shermer wrote the Pet Sitter Dog Walker Bible, which changed my life for pet sitting. Um, uh, <laughs> I can't even think fast. It enough. doesn't have to even be pet sitting. It could be business in general, leadership, uh, capitalism. I've seen a few of your shots. Ooh, the conscious books that you read. capitalism, conscious capitalism. That is such a phenomenal book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you made one minute and you added one that I actually have on my to-do, my to-read list, Conscious Capitalism, because that's a big, big thing for me. All right, awesome yes. job. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. All right. All Great right. Great job. I mean, people can just use that list and uh, improve their businesses basically right now. All right, oh, yeah. so you are pretty young. You're, you graduated college with a business degree, and then you started a pet sitting business. So you could have basically started a pet any business, any business in any industry. So what inspired you to start a pet care business specifically? Um, I kind of fell into it and I tell everyone it's been like one happy accident after another and it's all just been a dream come true for a dream that I didn't even know that I had. Um, I moved to Florida from Oregon and I grew up with dogs and I had a Jack Russell growing up and his name was Skip. And just like the movie from the 90s, you know, and he was my best friend and I moved here for, for college and I just missed him so much. And um, I was working at Target and something happened with my job there and had to leave and I was just missing my buddy. And I just got on Microsoft Word one day and typed up, hey, I'm Doug the dog guy, give me 20 bucks, I'll do whatever you need me to do. I just want to be around animals. And that's how it happened. I mean, within six months, I was doing it full time. That is what they say. Whatever it is that, you know, makes you happy. Follow that. They even say that about kids. Like if your kid, like my kid, if they love something and they spend like three hours just like engaged in this game, that's where their interest lies. And that's where they what they have to pursue. So you basically just missed your dog and started a career. That's amazing. Absolutely. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I never, ever thought that it would turn into a business or a career or anything. I just wanted to be around animals and man, it's just been amazing. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. You are really taking the pet sitting industry by storm. You're speaking at the upcoming conference. You're ready to write a book and you have this awesome YouTube channel that I want to talk to you about because a lot of pet sitters don't even think think about using YouTube to share their knowledge, share their experience, build community. Yet you have this really cool YouTube channel where twice a week you upload videos and share not only your experience as a pet sitter and business owner, but also tips for other people who want to do the same. So what inspired you to do that? Um, coming out of the pandemic, I had just so much energy and anxiety and just, um, all of this stuff built up in me that needed to go somewhere and I didn't know what to do with it. And I watch a lot of YouTube. I don't have cable or anything. So I just picked up my phone one day and just started talking to it. My boyfriend walked in the room like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know. I just, it just feels right right now. I don't know what's going to happen with it. And then I uploaded one video and a bunch of people commented on it and said, oh my God, I love this. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to start doing this then. And yeah. yeah, I've been uploading twice a week for five months now. And I still really don't know where I'm going with it. I just know that I love thinking that I am making a difference on our industry. And if I can help just one pet sitter make a better decision, then I can sleep tonight. That is awesome. And actually, as somebody who used to own a pet sitting business and did some coaching and speaking, I was a little apprehensive when I started watching your videos because you never know what the message is going to be. And if that your, your viewpoints are going to align with this person who's sharing these experiences and tips in an industry that I know so well. And you far exceeded my expectations. Your message <laughs> far exceeded my expectations. You truly are a natural business person. Obviously you're educated in business as well, but your advice, like in your reviews, like um, in your reviews video, where you say the mindset matters when you're receiving a review, when you're asking for a review, um, sharing the positive reviews that so many of us keep you may be amongst the team, but we don't put it on social media for that credibility that it builds. 
I am truly impressed and I want to dig in more into your specific experience as a professional pet sitter, but we have to take a break right now. So sit tight. We will be right back with this amazing pet sitter. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I'm speaking to Doug the Dog Guy, who has totally blown my mind with his experience as a professional pet sitter, sharing his expertise on YouTube with other professional pet sitters or aspiring professional pet sitters. So in order to dig into your experience, Doug, as a professional pet sitter and business owner, because it's a little different, it's not just that you pet care, you pet sit or you dog walk. You run a business and employ a staff, I think, uh, employees yeah. or contractors? Both. Both. Okay. So you know all the ins and outs about having workers, training people, qualifying clients, all the things that people don't realize go into running a pet care business. So our second game today, it is called Book Refer Pass, inspired by Shag Mary Kill. Ah! You know that game? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't know Shag Mary Gill? All right. right. So we're going to play book refer pass. And I'm going to give you an example from my pet sitting experience of a client that I experienced that I dealt with. And you're going to tell me if you would book them, if you would refer them and you can tell me whom you would refer them to, or if you would pass entirely, never not going to happen. No way. Oh, this will be good. This will be good. <laughs> All right. And I kept it kind of simple. I didn't go into too much detail because I don't want to open on any old wounds for myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready to go? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so the first one, a client's home, litter box or yard is a total pigsty. Would you book, refer or pass? I would need more details. I would probably book it, but I would need more details first. Okay, sounds good. So he's open-minded, guys. That's a good That's a good sign. Some people are like, if that litter box doesn't get cleaned before I get there, I'm not working with them. But this is I'll a good idea. I'll probably clean it when I get there. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends on how dirty, right? Like, I mean, is it is there poo splattered on the walls? I don't know. There's a I've cleaned that dirty. before, too. <laughs> yes, been there, done that, too. All right, next. The client demands you brush her cat's teeth at the meet and greet. I would probably book it depending on how the teeth brushing went. I would, <laughs> I would attempt. I you would attempt wouldn't see that as a red a red flag for the client. Oh, uh, it would be a red flag, but it's <laughs> it would be a red flag. But if if it was the right client in the right neighborhood, then yeah, I would book it. <laughs> He's in the business of doing business, guys. All right, seemingly friendly cat turns into a bloody demon when you try to pill him. Pass. Pass. Yeah, because if you have to pull the cat, you yep. can't really care for the cat without Pass. pulling it. Mm -hmm. A dog has zero dog walking manners and pulls you down the steep, steep entryway stairs. Book refer pass. I would book it and I would teach him how to walk on a leash correctly. There you go. What's your favorite like equipment that you use? A dual handled leash. I have one that I take everywhere with me. Dual handled leash. All right. And how about the, like, do you have a harness preference? Yeah. The harness with the clip in the front also, um, yes. those two combined lifesaver. Yes. Okay. People, if you aren't familiar, easy walk harness does it, but freedom harness is the one that originally created the dual yep. leash that connects into like the harness. All right. So yep. make a note, everybody. All right. Next one. The client requests updates after every single visit. Yeah, absolutely. Right? That's yeah, guaranteed. with technology, that's easy, right? Yep, guaranteed. Perfect. Client only wants you to care for their pet. Refer. Refer. Tell me why. <sighs> because if if I give them to someone on my team, then they're always going to be coming back to me, blowing my phone up and everything. So I would rather just refer them out from the get-go. Yes, and sometimes there are small pet sitting services where it's, own, it's a sole proprietor and that would be exactly. a better match for them, for sure. Exactly. Awesome, awesome answer. All right, overnight client, which you call live in pet care, I believe, has a right. creepy house that you think is haunted and the client wants you to stay there at least a few times a year for an extended period of time. Do you book, refer, or pass? Absolutely book it. <laughs> I would love that. 
I have several clients' homes that I stay at regularly that I swear are haunted, and I love it. I live for that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, so I did have an experience with a haunted client's house, Ooh. and the last time I stayed there, I felt I was going potty, and and I there was nobody there, right? So like I didn't close the door or anything. It was a huge bathroom, and yeah. I felt like somebody was watching me. And of course, our in tech with technology now, I was like is there a camera? Like, is my instinct oh, telling no. me there's a camera in here? So I just kind of let it pass and called myself, you know, paranoid, whatever. And then I went to sleep at night and I kid you not, I promise you this happened. I am not making this up. At some point in the night, I, I had this side of my face on the pillow and on this side of my face, in this ear, I hear, I'm here. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Needless oh, to no. say, we did not take any more overnights. We finished that one. Luckily, the client um, was not happy with our new price increase or like something that we changed. And she was like, maybe it's time to, for me to find somebody else. And we were Isn't like, yeah, maybe, convenient. maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the ghost can take care of your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So it's your turn. What is the creepiest thing that's ever happened to you as a professional pet sitter? The creepiest? Creepiest. Oh, I don't know. I've had a lot of creepy things happen. Um, when I very first started pet sitting, I had this couple, they would board their dogs at my condo where I was living at the time. And um, they were an older couple. They were a little strange. And they asked me if I would join them on their vacation share um their room with them and we could find someone else to take care of the dogs and i think just the way that they approached it that is the creepiest situation i've ever been in as a pet sitter oh my yeah. i've also been stalked by a client also so yes, I, I've you some... have a video about that that i have not gotten to but i plan to tell me about that Oh, long story short, I was this guy's dog walker for like several months. And then um, he just kept having problem after problem after problem. And I told him, okay, I'm not going to offer you services anymore. And he figured out where I lived. Um, just a pro, a pro tip for any pet setters and dog walkers, don't put your home address on your Google My Business listing. Never, ever do that. That was my mistake. So he showed up outside of my house at three o'clock in the morning um, I ended up having to get a restraining order. It was ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Okay. So pro tip, UPS stores have actual physical locations that don't have exactly. PO boxes. And those are a great option. If you want to have a mailing address that is not your home on Google, my business. All right. But ding, then ding, that ding. brings me, yeah, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> great tips all around. So that brings me to my next question. So what is the hardest thing? about being a professional pet sitter? Um, lo losing pets, you know, you, you fall in love with them, you build these relationships with them, you become part of the family. And when they pass away, I mean, it, it's, I've, I've had some pets pass away where I swear it was as hard on me as it was on their owners. And every one of those pets, I mean, they live forever in my heart. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. There's some, there's always just like that special pet. A lot of times they've been with you for a long time. You've taken care of them for a long time, or they're like every single day and you, you look forward to seeing them. And then when it comes time for them to go to, go to the bridge, it's just, it's, yeah. it's terrible. It's terrible. I, I also saw that you mentioned on one of your videos, actually, you have a video about the worst things about pet sitting. Um, yeah. You talked about respect and you talked about how you don't feel like you get respect. And I could not agree with you more. I felt always like people thought my job was cute yep. and how nice and how fun, but they never imagined the amount of responsibility that we take on when we are, especially as business owners, hiring people to go into strangers' homes when they're not there. Can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. You know, when I, when I first started pet sitting, everyone in my life was like, you have a college degree, you know, you, you've done all these things and you're going to go play with dogs. Why would you throw your life away like that? Why would you throw away your career like that? And I was, and I told everyone, you don't get it. You don't get it. You'll see it one day, but you don't get it. And luckily they all see it now, but even with 
clients and you meet new people in life, it's they hear that you're a pet sitter and they just think, oh, you just play with dogs and you cuddle kittens. And they don't realize how much truly goes into what we do. Um, and some people you can explain it and they'll get it. And some people you can explain it all day and they'll still still be like, well, you're just playing with dogs. Yeah, it's silly. It's like, it's not taken seriously for sure. Um, so how long have you been doing this? Eight years. Eight years. And can you tell me how it is that you somehow avoided paying rent for three years by being <laughs> a professional pet sitter? Yeah. Well, so it was three years with one client, and then I've had several other shorter stints with other clients throughout the years. I would say out of out of the eight years, I probably paid rent less than half of it altogether. Um, yeah, and it's all about building. Bravo, connections. man! Good job. <laughs> yes, thank working you. the system. That's the way. Like that's so smart. Well, thank you. I, I'm a big believer in the financial independence movement. So I feel like as mu the more that I can work and save now, that's one more day that I won't have to work when I have kids and a family and all of that going on in my life. That's beautiful. And yeah. So I would rather make the sacrifice now. And uh, But it's all about these relationships that you build with your clients. And I had been this guy's daily dog walker for a couple of years, and he did a contract work for the military. Uh, he was retired military and he got an opportunity in the Middle East where he was going to be, be there. It was originally supposed to be 18 months. And he, had, he didn't have a wife, he doesn't have kids. I was really the only person he knew in town and he adored his dogs, his, he worshiped his dogs and so did I. So he asked me, you know, why don't you just move into my house while I'm gone. And I thought he was joking. I mean, I literally thought he was joking. I laughed and he's like, no, I'm serious. And uh, the 18 months, then there was like a six month uh, uh, extension after that. And then another extension after this. And I ended up being there for three years, living rent free in a home that, I mean, I would never be able to afford to live in otherwise. <laughs> right. I and, saw a video where you talked about, because you live in Jacksonville or in the Jacksonville area, you get to stay when you do overnight pet care or live in visits, like you call them. Um, you get to stay in these amazing homes that are right on the waterfront. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, it's just a crazy, awesome perk to pet sitting that we, you know, some of the houses that I stay at, I, it feels like I'm on vacation and it's, it's, it's really cool. I, I love it. <laughs> yes. I remember when I was doing overnight pet care and I, we were saying, we would stay at these historic, gorgeous homes in Northern Virginia. And one of them was this like manor and it had a boxwood maze in the front yard. Like that's how oh, huge wow. the front yard was. And I that's would walk amazing. this sweet dog through the maze every day. And yes. I would get to sit out on this gorgeous like porch every evening. And I was like, and I got paid for it too. I was like, how did I get so lucky? <laughs> I know sometimes I, I send the clients their invoice and I'm like, I feel bad about this, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Don't feel too bad. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, how could our audience learn more about you, your YouTube channel, your business, if they're in your area, tell us everything. Yeah. So I'm bad to the bone pet care on everything. It's youtube.com slash bad to the bone pet care, facebook.com slash bad to the bone pet care and at bad to the bone pet care on Instagram. You can send me an email at bad to the bone pet care at gmail.com. And then if you want to follow me a little bit personally, um, you can look me up at the wandering pet sitter on Instagram. Very, very cool. Well, I just want to propose a toast to you for taking the time to chat with me today. Here is to all of your pet sitting adventures and the book that I look forward to reading. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I also want to propose a toast to our executive producer, Mark Winter, for making this show possible. Here's to you, Mark, uh, and uh, many more shows to, to come. Cheers, cheers to Mark. <laughs> and of course, to our audience for joining us on Pet Life Radio and on YouTube. Here is to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. Cheers. To learn more about Covered in Pet Hair, please visit coveredinpethair.com or petliferadio.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.